My name is Philip Rosenstiel. I'm professor of molecular medicine here at Kiel University and I'm coordinator of the CISCIT project. CISCIT is an interdisciplinary project on systems medicine of chronic inflammatory diseases. We focus on three major disorders, that is inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus erythematosus. So this is chronic inflammation of the gut, chronic inflammation of the joint and chronic inflammation of the vessels throughout the body. We are interested in defining new biomarker signatures to improve therapy for patients with inflammatory diseases, to improve early diagnostics and to ultimately also come to mechanisms how we may actually reprogram these disorders. Major achievements probably are related to interdisciplinary work. Scientists from different disciplines came together and actually looked at biomarker signatures, so small alterations that reside within the blood and may either predict the presence of disease, the behavior of the disease, or also the behavior towards certain therapies. And that's something probably where we have the most significant findings uh, really in that area where we see that certain biomarkers either are present before therapy or are changed early during therapy and these basically define how patients now respond to different targeted therapies and these may be um, the foundation for future clinical studies that are now to come. CISCIT has as a major impact that it is joining large European patient cohorts and really trying to establish validated biomarkers from peripheral blood to impact the life of patients. The major challenge I think that we all didn't expect that is very clear and that was the pandemic situation that we faced. More or less all labs were closed and that really in a kind of early phase of the consortium was something really critical. However, we somehow dealt with the situation, and of course, chronic inflammatory diseases also are related to an acute inflammatory disease such as COVID-19. And what many of these labs actually have done, they work together in larger um, biomarker consortia, identifying now with the hampered research on chronic inflammatory disease now suddenly start to, to use this expertise and, and work on COVID. And I think if you really want to see some impact um, that was not expected, that is what came out here. It's that all these te technological approaches that we are using, for example, looking at the fate of single cells and their programs, were suddenly employed in a completely unknown disease and um, really made an impact finding biomarkers, prognostic biomarkers for predicting severe disease cause. The field of personalized medicine has to evolve in a manner that it really goes to the clinic, it really comes to the patient and that is that we now shift for more basic oriented research, of course we have done translational research already but this is, I would still say, this is more basic systems medicine and we really have to go to clinical trials. And we, we see this, that either markers will stratify for certain therapies or markers will stratify patients with a potentially mild versus a severe. So choosing the right therapy at the right time will be the next step. And you can only do that if you do that in clinical trials because we can find many, many nice biomarkers and that's very important and have new technologies but these technologies really have to enter the clinic and they have to be delivered right to the patient. And I think this is when we speak about the development of personalized medicine in the future, in the next five to 10 years, this is what we have to learn. And cancer, it's more or less already present. So genomes are sequenced and therapies are stratified, but we have similarly divergent or diverse therapies also for other diseases. And I think that really inflammatory diseases with more than 10 antibodies and therapeutic principles having entered the market already, now are at the forefront to really show that personalized medicine can deliver. The task is not fulfilled and we need to uh, have additional funding measures to basically follow down that path. The second point is we need funding for clinical trials and it's very clear that this funding only partially can come through pharmaceutical industry but it also has to be investigator-initiated trials because if you basically want to find a stratifying therapy and you cut down the market 
of a drug to, for example, 20% of patients, that is something that clearly has to be done by academic investigators because it's also not in the great interest of industry. And the third thing is we are just scraping on the surface. What we do with our therapies is basically blocking the disease, but we do not change it. It's still an incurable disease. And one of the tasks of CISCIT was just the first attempt to reprogram cells. And that is what we think will be the future, that at some point we can reprogram certain immune cell types, kind of make these molecular switches back again to a healthy state and thereby reprogram disease. And clearly this is basic research which we still need. And again, this is such an endeavor that this can be only reached at the European international and interdisciplinary level. Collaborative research projects always have the big advantage that they bring together cultures, how to approach a problem, how to think about a problem, and every scientist from every different uh, country basically has been trained in a slightly different manner. And of course, this endeavor can only be reached by many, many different minds working together.